Covering news where you live. This is 5 News. Thank you so much for joining us for the latest news and weather where you live. I'm Tiffany Lee. I'm Joe Ellison. Now overcrowding at jails and prisons in Arkansas is a problem. And this week, Governor Sarah Huckabee Sanders unveiled a proposal to build a new state prison in Franklin County. The state bought more than 800 acres of land off of Highway 215. And nearly $3 million state representatives believe it is the ideal spot because it's close to infrastructure and a population that can staff the facility. They also say it's large enough to offer privacy to both neighbors and inmates. It's no secret, public safety has been one of the top priorities. Arkansas is still significantly short of the demand. Our county jails are absolutely overloaded and do not have the ability to uh, arrest and retain people that have committed crimes. Now, not everyone is on board with this idea. There are some residents who live there in the area who say they still have a lot of questions. Some say they're even selling their homes. And there are a few more steps that would need to take place before they break ground on this project. Well, as words spread about the plans for the new state prison, both the Charleston mayor and a Franklin County judge posted statements on Facebook. Now, the mayor said that he is committed to gathering the facts and ensuring the most positive outcome for the town. And Judge Ricky Bowman said that he called the governor's office multiple times. He was able to set up a town hall for residents to express their concerns, which will be on Thursday, November the 7th. That'll be at 6 in the evening at the auditorium of the Charleston Middle School. Well, we're continuing to follow the murder case of Amber Waterman. She already pleaded guilty in Missouri's federal court to kidnapping resulting in death and received a life sentence in the death of Ashley Bush and her unborn baby. A ruling earlier this week allowed the state of Arkansas to pursue two additional charges of capital murder. And now Waterman's attorneys are planning to appeal that ruling. Her attorneys say that the case should be dismissed because of double jeopardy, and they've requested the case to go before the state's Supreme Court. Well, we now know the storm that ripped through Prairie Grove early Thursday morning was an EF1 tornado with wind speeds of up to 100 miles per hour. This is Sky 5 footage where the storms pushed over fences and pulled the roof off of several homes. The storm caused widespread power outages and left behind a lot of storm debris. Many residents say their next steps are filing insurance claims. All right, it is Friday, November the 1st. We're heading into that weekend. Let's check in with Bella for a look at the forecast. Well, it's definitely feeling a little bit cooler out there today. We're seeing our high temperatures in the low 70s, about 73 in Fayetteville and Fort Smith. This is our average for this time of the year, but we are so used to those record high temperatures that we started off this week with that this is feeling really chilly for us. We are at about 71 in spots like Bentonville and Rogers, staying a little bit cooler. We're seeing that in Waldron as well. As we get into the weekend, we're going to start to see some showers rolling back our way. You can see a slight drop in those temperatures as we move into Saturday, building up those rain chances and increasing those chances as we move into Sunday. Sunday has a better chance of seeing some of those isolated thunderstorms as well. We'll see about a 60 to 70 percent chance of seeing those rain showers on and off throughout Sunday. It's going to be round after round. We can go ahead and take a look at what we're seeing. Things are very quiet throughout our Friday, but once we get into Saturday, that late morning, going to start to see some scattered showers popping up across our area. That's going to lead to some more rain as we go throughout the day, building that up, especially overnight Friday, Saturday into Sunday. You can see this swath of rain coming in strong overnight. That's going to come with a few isolated thunderstorms. Most of those rain showers going to be a little bit lighter for us, pouring down rain shower after shower as we go throughout the day. You can see that round coming in and then we'll get a slight break and then another round coming in. After that, we'll see another good day of rain for Monday. You can see temperatures taking a slight drop. We'll get a cold front that comes through on Monday, brings back severe chances into our area for that Monday. So we're keeping a close eye on um, our forecast for that Monday shower system. Once we get into Tuesday and Wednesday, definitely a lot cooler, seeing a lot more clear skies as well. Calm weather for the middle of next week. Just going to be a bit of an active weekend before then. All right, thanks so much for that, Bill. Well, right now is an active time of year for deer out on the roadways. Yeah, definitely. Brooke Bugner, she's showing us what to look out for as we head into this peak time of year for deer collisions. The deer were here before we were, and we've built homes and office buildings and shopping centers and uh, what used to be their habitat. 
And that's why you might be seeing them more around central Arkansas. And yes, even in the city. You know, there's a lot of green spaces. Uh, we have the Arkansas River uh, and those green spaces and those river corridors like the Arkansas River, Foosh Creek, those are travel corridors for wildlife and they're going to be in those places. And because there are a lot of them nearby, Trey Reed with Game and Fish says pay extra attention to the road when behind the wheel. They are on the move this time of year because it is the breeding season. Uh, also with the time change coming up, you know, that's going to mean you're going to be driving at those dawn and dusk hours, which is when deer are more active. And if you see one in the road, he says slow down and don't swerve. Sometimes honking your horn can can maybe spook them a little bit and get them out of the road. But uh, the key is, you know, don't swerve, don't slam on the brakes. Just be careful because uh, the accidents caused by driving off the road typically are going to be worse than a collision with a deer. If you do hit a deer, he suggests calling your local authorities or even RDOT if it happens on a state highway or interstate. And when it comes to managing the deer population, Reed says hunting is the number one solution. Hunters in Arkansas check about 200,000 deer annually. So, I mean, that's uh, a lot of deer that are being removed from the population, ending up mostly on, on you know, dinner plates and in a, a great bowl with chili. So it, it definitely is a, is a huge help. Brooke Buckner, 5 News. Well, those are some of your top stories. Thank you for joining us here on this Friday. Have a great weekend.